Hello everyone. Welcome to this mini lecture of the Engineering Design and Innovation MSc program. I'm Prof Lo, the Academic Director for this program. I will give you a short rundown on what this program is about and why it is important in the current world that we're living in. Innovation is a key enabler to the success of any organization. Amid strong economic and environmental challenges, it is imperative to train a workforce which can innovate and create value to enterprises and society at large. This program will give you the opportunity to experience a full process of problem discovery, ideation, prototyping and testing of your solution. So let's start with how innovation takes place. Innovation is about creating great products that users need and leads to a great business value when there is a market for it. In order to achieve this, you need to understand the users and stakeholders, understand the problems they are facing, and adopt the product and engineering design process to bring innovation to life. Of course, you also need a strong diverse team to bring this to fruition, and this means making use of the diverse skills in your team to realize the solution and exploit market needs. So the ingredients of a successful innovation is quite clear, but of course rather challenging to achieve. To start you off, we teach you a little about design thinking so that you can gather deep insights to find meaningful solutions. Then we teach you the engineering systems design process to give you a systematic approach to realizing your design. Engineering design is nothing more than a problem-solving approach to teach you how you can achieve a solution to your problem. Product development is somewhat a cross between design thinking and engineering design. It is the full process for developing solutions starting from initial problem statements which are uncovered by the design thinking process and finally the product solutioning process which is central to engineering design. Entrepreneurship is what gets you to the innovations, in the sense that it teaches you strategies to commercialize your products. Often in the process, you need to rethink, iterate and pivot in order to close the gaps with business needs, market needs. Design thinking is thus the core to the innovation process. We adopt this process from the Stanford Design School. It consists of five steps to uncover real problems ideate solutions, prototype and test. You will gather feedback for your initial solutions and you can iterate as many times as you need to refine your thoughts and ideas. You will use this process throughout your innovation journey. In the solutioning process, you learn about the V model that is frequently used in engineering design. It is a systematic approach to consider the system specifications, high level design, detailed design and eventually the low-level development before finally conducting testing, verification and validation. The V model also considers stakeholder analysis, deployment and management of the final product to ensure that the product completely satisfies the needs of stakeholders. When designing a complex system involving many functional groups of people, the V model is a common page for all involved to capture considerations such as safety, reliability, optimization, quality assurance, and many others. This understanding is important for everyone involved. The engineering design process forms a central part of the solutioning process. I hope this gives you a good idea of the core takeaways from this program, which is to understand design thinking, product design, and engineering process. The rest of the module consists of a major project for you to practice what you have learned from the core and the electives allow you to delve deeper into areas of your interest that will support your project. So you see that the program structure consists of 50% core and 50% elective. A large part of your experience will be derived from the major design project where you will work with students with different backgrounds on either a self-proposed project or an industry problem statement. Bear in mind that one MC is equivalent to 2.5 hours of work per week, including contact time, preparation and assignment. 
Hence, a module of 4MC is equivalent to 10 hours per week of work. For the project module of 12 MCs, it will be divided into 6 MCs each semester, and this is equivalent to 15 hours of work per week. So you can expect that the project is quite substantial, and a budget will be given to you to develop your ideas. We also have workshop facilities and support staff to help you in your prototyping. The electives are organised in three baskets, design, technology and enterprise. They are offered by domain experts from different departments, as you can see from the module codes which are slightly different. I'm sure you'll be able to find some interesting modules to supplement your knowledge in the core modules. For this MSc program, we admit students with bachelor degrees from different disciplines. We hope to get good students with various backgrounds, such as industrial design, all kinds of engineering disciplines, and even those with business and science degrees. We however hope that you have some prototyping experience, be it in web or mobile app development, software design, hardware design, mechanical and electronic circuit designs. We welcome a diverse cohort of students in this program because we believe that diversity will give us a better chance of developing more holistic solutions. This is a one-year program starting from January to December. However, you can also take three semesters which means you complete in May of the following year. We have a one program fee of 50,000 Singapore dollars for the 2023 January intake, excluding goods and services tax. This fee is subject to changes in future cohorts. The complete program will be 40 MCs worth, and you have the flexibility to choose modules from different disciplines. Here is one sample program schedule. You start in January with three 4MC modules plus the major project. We start you off early on the project so that you have time to speak to stakeholders and gather more insights about the problem that you want to solve. We recommend that you remain on campus to continue with the project during the special term and there should be an opportunity to complete one elective module as well. If you prefer to complete the major design by special SAM, then it is best that you push your third elective into the August semester. If all goes well, you should be able to complete the rest of your modules by December and you graduate thereafter. Now for the projects. The Innovation and Design Curriculum is an existing undergraduate program and we have been running this for more than 10 years. Students work on projects as well and we have existing themes in six areas. Innovations in Intelligent Systems, innovating for better healthcare, urban mobility, smarter living and sustainable cities, and innovating with immersive reality. You will have plenty of scope to fit your project of choice in any one of these six themes. Here are some examples of projects that we currently have. Innovations in intelligent systems is pretty much extensive engineering, suitable for students who wish to have deep technical skills in a complex systems such as a satellite, autonomous vehicles, and collaborative robots like those in the RoboMaster teams. Innovating for urban mobility is about sustainable transportation. We just announced our first electric race car earlier this year. We have been developing Formula SAE combustion engine cars for the last 20 years, and every year students go to the US for a race at least before COVID. The Delta is a collaboration with National Geographic, which gave us a challenge to build flying machines. We conceptualized a trike, which is essentially a paraglider when we hang a parachute behind it. You should be able to Google this to see the video. Alpha Electrics is a group of undergraduate students who came together to develop battery swapping technologies, and they have since formed a company. Innovating for better healthcare is about assistive, wearable and diagnostic technologies which our students develop together with doctors in the hospitals. The surgical identification system is more of a productivity tool to reduce the time taken to inspect surgical instruments. There are many more such projects you can find in our website. Innovating for smarter living encompasses any and everything. 
So you see some interesting projects here. The first is an IoT project to monitor curing of concrete. The second is a drone which is developed for leaf sampling and tree inspection, working with colleagues from the Faculty of Science. The robotic drain crawler is an attempt to provide surveillance for dengue larvae in hard to access places. This crawler was built from scratch and it just won the prize at the university level. There's also a lot of scope for this project theme on sustainable cities. Here are just three projects from the recent past. One is on cultivating mushrooms using food soiled paper. The other is about using biomass to turn that into filaments for additive manufacturing. The last is on recycling. We also have many students who are interested in urban farming. It is actually quite a craze. Last but not least, immersive reality is very popular among students. We have many exciting projects here and includes developing applications in the metaverse. All in all, there are many projects that are deserving. We prefer that students propose their own projects based on their own experiences. Often, when you have experienced something difficult, that becomes a strong motivator to find good solutions. In our experience, we find that the students who propose their own projects end up with better outcomes, i.e. they do better in the module because they end up being able to create better solutions. You need not come up with your own projects from scratch as well. We do organise dialogues with industry to hear about their challenges and students can continue these dialogues to identify projects which are of mutual interest. We are not short of industry partners. Here are just some of them. You can see that quite a number of hospitals which are looking for solutions to either improve productivity within the hospital environment or they are medical devices which can assist doctors in their work. We have companies like DB Schenker looking for solutions for the containers which they move all over the world. Bang & Olufsen is interested in sustainable products and energy harvesting. We are involved with the Singapore Eye Research Institute for identifying various types of eye disorders. We are also involved in the Singapore Zoo to track some of the animals. Finally, we also encourage our students to think about launching their own startups. Over the years, we have quite a number of them. These are just some. Tiny Moss and New Space are started by students who graduated from our satellite program. Medi VR is started by students who graduated in 2021 and are now working with the School of Medicine to develop some VR software to assist in the training of young doctors. Some students do not necessarily start up their own companies when they graduate. They become co-founders of startups as well after they leave our NUS. Currently, we also have a pre-accelerator in EDIC where we support students after graduation to continue to develop their product ideas. Here are some possible career prospects. Ultimately, this is a program that will sensitize the way you think about problems go about seeking solutions and eventually develop a prototype. This is how I will sum up the outcomes of this MSc program. You will gain critical thinking skills, hands-on skills, and a lot of experience and skills you develop here will be transferable and should keep you in good stead in whichever industry you decide to join. It is also a good launching pad for your own startup, particularly within NUS, there are also other opportunities for such activities. NUS Enterprise has a big program to cultivate entrepreneurship. I should encourage you to explore all of NUS to find out the different opportunities that are open to you when you are here. I thank you all for your attention. I hope this has been useful. I hope you will consider joining us in the near future.